FCC commercial element one question pool. Sub element B, communications procedures. Six key topics, six exam questions. Key topic seven, bridge to bridge operations. One, what traffic management service is operated by the U.S. Coast Guard in certain designated waters areas to prevent ship collisions, groundings, and environmental harm? B, vessel traffic service, or VTS. Two, what is a bridge to bridge station? D, a VHF radio station located on a ship's navigational bridge or main control station that is used only for navigational communications. Three, when may a bridge-to-bridge -bridge transmission be more than one watt? A, when broadcasting a distress message and rounding a bend in a river or traveling in a blind spot. Four, what is a, what, when is it legal to transmit high power on channel 13? D, all of these. Five, a ship station using VHF bridge to bridge channel 13. A, may be identified by the same, by the name of the ship in lieu of a call sign. Six, the primary purpose of bridge to bridge communications is C, navigational communications. Key topic eight, operating procedures one. Question one, what is the best way for a radio operator to minimize or prevent interference to other stations? <clears throat> C, determine that a frequency is not in use by monitoring the frequency before transmitting. Two, under what circumstances may a coast station using telephony transmit a general call to a group of vessels? B, when announcing or preceding the transmission of distress, urgency, safety, or other important messages. Three, who determines when a ship stations may transmit routine traffic destined for a coast or government station in the mar maritime mobile service? C, ship stations must comply with instructions given by the coast or government station. Four, what is required of a ship station which has established initial contact with another station on 2182 kHz or channel 16? A, the stations must change to an authorized working frequency for the transmission of messages. Five, how does a coast station notify a ship that it has a message for the ship? D, the coast station may transmit at intervals lists of call signs in alphabetical order for which they have traffic. Six, what is the priority of communications? B, distress, urgency, and safety. Key topic nine, operating procedures two. Question one, under what circumstances May a ship or aircraft station interfere with a public coast station? A. In cases of distress. 2. Ordinarily, how often would a station using a telef telephony emission identify? B. At the beginning and end of each transmission and at 15 minute intervals. 3. When using a SSB station on 2182 kHz or VHF-FM on channel 16. D. All of these. 4. What should a station operator do before making a transmission? A. Except for the transmission of distress calls, Determine that the frequency is not in use by monitoring the frequency before transmitting. Five, on what frequency should a ship station normally call a coast station when using radio telephony emission? B, calls should be initiated on the appropriate ship to shore working frequency of the coast station. Six, 
In the International Phonetic Alphabet, the letters E, M, and S are represented by the words C, Echo Mike Sierra. Key Topic 10, Distress Communications. In 1, what information must be included in a distress message? D, all of the above. 2, what are the highest priority communications from ships at sea? C, distress calls are highest and then communications preceded by urgency and then safety signals. 3, what is a distress communication? B, an internationally recognized communication indicating that the sender is threatened by grave and immediate danger and requests immediate assistance. Four, what is the order of priority of radio telephone communications in the maritime services? C, distress calls and signals followed by communications preceded by urgency and safety signals and all other communications. Five, the radio telephone distress call and message consists of D, all of the above. Six, what is distress traffic? A, all messages relative to the immediate assistance required by a ship, aircraft, or other vehicle threatened by grave or imminent danger, such as life and safety of persons on board or man overboard. Key topic 11, urgency and safety communication. What is a typical urgency transmission? A, a request for medical assistance that does not rise to the level of a distress or critical weather transmission higher than safety. Two, what is the internationally recognized urgency call? B, the words pon pon spoken three times before the urgency call. Three, what is a safety transmission? A, a communications transmission which indicates that a station is preparing to transmit an important navigation or weather warning. Four, the urgency signal concerning the safety of a ship, aircraft, or per person shall be sent only on the authority of C, either master of ship or person responsible for mobile station. Five, the urgency signal has lower priority than B, distress. Six, what safety signal call word is spoken three times, followed by the station call letters spoken three times to announce a storm warning, danger to navigation, or special aid to navigation. D. Securite. Key Topic 12. GMDSS. Question 1. What is the fundamental concept of GMDSS? D. It is intended to automate and improve emergency communications in the maritime industry. Two, the primary purpose of the GMDSS is to C, automate and improve emergency communications for the world's shipping industry. Three, what is the basic concept of GMDSS? D, all of these. Four, GMDSS is primarily a system based on D, linking the search and rescue authorities ashore with shipping in the immediate vicinity of a ship in distress or in need of assistance. Five, what is the responsibility of vessels under GMDSS? C, every ship is able to perform those communications functions that are essential for the safety of the ship itself and other ships. Six, GMDSS is required for which of the following? B, Solus Convention ships of 300 gross tons or more.